Hey, real quick before we get into it, all of this information comes from my online checkride course. I have been in your shoes, studying for my checkride and not knowing exactly what to study or what I needed to know. And you don't want to be in the position where you fail your checkride because you didn't know the right information. And as I was going through flight school, I wish I had this course. It is literally everything you need to know to pass your checkread. It is literally everything you need to know to pass your checkread. And I dropped the price of the course super low so that it's accessible to everyone. Whether you're going for your private, your commercial, or your flight instructor, take this course. And if you're going for your CFI, take the course below and feel free to use the information in it for your lessons. Like I said, this is just the course I wish I had. The link is in the description below, and let's talk about it. Through the symmetry of lift. Okay, so we're going to look at our rotor system from the top-down perspective. So we're looking from the top-down. Here's our fuselage, tail rotor. There's our blades. Okay, here we are. And let's say that, for this example, we are moving in this direction. We're moving forward. Helicopter is moving in this forward direction. Well, we have a counterclockwise rotating rotor system, so our blades are moving in this direction. All right, on the left-hand side, as we're moving, er, yeah, on the left-hand side, over here we have what's called the retreating blade. Retreating. Retreating blade, or retreating side. So it is retreating away from the helicopter, or away from the airflow. On this side, we have what is called the advancing side. Advancing side. Why? Because it is pushing into the air. So if the helicopter is moving forward, which way are we moving? Or which way is the air moving? The airflow is moving in this direction. So this is the airflow direction. So we're moving forward, we're going along forward, and air is coming at us like this. That's blue airfoil. Okay, so advancing side, retreating side. Can you see that? Yeah, just like that. Okay, so on the advancing side, let's, let's establish some airspeed. So let's say that we are the airspeed is 100 miles per hour just to make it easy so 100 100 100 so that means we are either moving forward at 100 knots or if we were in a hover the air is coming at us at 100 knots it's the same thing let's say we're just flying along at 100 knots and that's just how fast the air is moving the wind is moving okay let's establish some blade speeds so let's say our blade speed is 600 miles per hour and I want to mention these numbers don't actually mean anything. Um, I'm just making these numbers because they're easy to use. Do they actually mean anything? No. Don't. It, it doesn't matter. It just proves the point. 600 miles per hour over here. So let's break this down. We have the advancing side that's pushing into the air. We have the retreating side, which is pushing away from the air. The air is moving at 100 miles per hour, um, and the blades are moving at 600 miles per hour. Each blade is moving at the same speed. Okay, so on the retreating side, we have the airspeed. Whoops, let's use blue. Blue over here. Okay, so let's say our airspeed equals 100 miles per hour. That's how fast we're going. And on the advancing side, the airspeed is also 100 miles per hour. Airspeed equals 100 miles per hour. What's our blade speed? Well, the blades are moving at blade speed. They're moving at the exact same, 600 miles per hour. Blade speed equals 600 miles per hour. Okay, here's where the fun happens. When we look at the advancing side, the airflow is coming in this direction, and the blade is moving in this direction. So they are going against each other. We can see that here. Our air is moving in this direction, our blade is moving in this direction. They're going against each other. We call this a collision, and it is an additive force. Um, it's like a head-on collision. A head-on collision is going to be much worse than a tail collision. So this is an additive force. What is our total speed over here? Total speed comes out to about 700 miles per hour of what it, that blade is experiencing. Okay, on the retreating side, this is 
the air is moving in this direction. The the blade is moving in this direction. So when that air comes, it's just gonna they're kind of moving together. Um, and it ends up being a subtractive force. It's less damaging than the head-on collision. A head-on collision is going to be much worse than a fender bender. So it's a subtractive force. So we get a total effective speed. Our, whoops. Yeah, that's cool. Total speed equals 600 minus 100 is 500. So the advancing side is experiencing 700 units of speed that is, uh the total speed on the retreating side is 500 well when we look at the lift equation we take our oops where to go we take our velocity times itself so we got 700 squared and 500 squared if we were just looking at velocity so lift equals velocity squared and lift equals velocity squared if we were only comparing velocity on the advancing side we're going to produce more lift on the retreating side we're going to produce less lift why because the speeds the, the effective speed of the blade is different on the advancing side we're going to get way more lift on the advancing side and less lift on the retreating side what would this cause? Well, this would cause a constant rolling motion. We'd constantly be rolling because the advancing side is producing significantly more lift. So we'd constantly be in this left roll. This principle is dissymmetry of lift. How to fix dissymmetry of lift? Hey, right here, check right question. This is going to come up on your check right. How to fix dissymmetry of lift through what we call, you know the answer, Blade flapping equals blade flapping. Dissymmetry of lift is that condition due to difference in velocity. Well, obviously we can't fly through that because that advancing side is going to cause us to have that uh, left roll. How do we fix it? Through blade flapping. How does this work on a Robinson rotor system? If you have a different rotor system, you account for it a little bit differently, but it's the same principle. So. If we zoom in on the rotor hub, kind of looks like this. Over here, we have coning hinges. Coning hinge. That's also a coning hinge. Right in the center, is what we care about, we have what's called a flapping hinge. Flapping hinge. This is also called the Jesus nut. The reason is because if that nut breaks, you're praying to Jesus. It is the one part of the helicopter that can fall apart and we are screwed. So flapping hinge. Um, we have those coning hinges we don't really care about. That should have an E on the end of it. Coning hinge. Okay. So flapping hinge and coning hinge. So let's talk about this scenario that we're stating here. We're saying that the advancing side is going to be producing more lift so it's going to flap up the retreating side is going to flap down let's look at this from the back of the helicopter if we look at our fuselage and we have skids and we've got our tail rotor and then we've got our main rotor mast and then we've got let's extend that up a little bit then i'm going to zoom in on the hub here okay so we're saying that the advancing side is going to flap up because it's producing more lift and the retreating side is going to flap down. This is kind of what we're saying. Let me draw that rotor system a little bit better because the actual hub also rotates. So we've got... Okay, here's our flapping hinge. Here's our coning hinges. So because we have that flapping hinge, we're saying because the advancing side is producing more lift that it is flapping up and the retreating side is flapping down. So it can flap like this, but the advancing side is going to flap up because it's producing more lift, retreating side flaps down. Okay, when we change the collective, we collectively change the pitch. So the blades are going to have the same pitch. So let's draw each of the blades. And we're going to say that they hypothetically have the same angle. Okay, what's that first wind flow pattern that we have that we talked about that every blade experiences? We have rotational relative wind. As our blade moves through the air, we have flow due to rotation. So we have 
rotational relative wind. Both blades experience rotational relative wind. What is the advancing blade doing? The advancing blade is flapping up, right? It is flapping up here. We call this movement, you're not going to believe this, up flap velocity. It is flapping up. We call this up flap velocity. Because it's going boom. Okay, on the retreating side, what's it doing? It's flapping down. What do we call that? Down flap velocity. It's flapping down. Down flap velocity. Okay, when we get when we add two things together, what do we call that? We call that a result. So our resultant relative wind of let's talk about the advancing side, the up flap velocity and the rotational relative wind. This is our resultant relative wind. Resultant relative wind. On the retreating side, when we add rotational relative wind and down flap velocity, what do we get? A resultant relative wind. Okay. Let's look at this. Uh, let's use yellow. That's fine. What is the angle of attack? The angle of attack is the difference between the chord line and the resultant relative wind. Well, on the advancing side, where's our chord line? Right here. The difference between, or where's our angle of attack? It's the difference between our chord line and our resultant relative wind. This yellow part is our angle of attack. On the retreating side, we have our chord line and our resultant relative wind, making this entire area our angle of attack. So on the advancing side, what's happening? We have a high airspeed. Uh, let's redo that. So let's say our airspeed is high, but our angle of attack is small. Angle of attack is small. Okay, on the retreating side, our airspeed is low. But our angle of attack is high. This is how we fix dissymmetry of lift through blade flapping. Now, this is obviously quite dramatic, but the blades definitely do flap uh, enough to compensate for this. So, velocity squared in our lift equation really makes it a problem because we have this dissymmetry of lift because the advancing side is producing significantly more lift then the retreating side just due to the lower velocity. So we're gonna have this rolling moment. Well, we can't have that. So how do we fix dissymmetry of lift? Through blade flapping. The advancing blade flaps up, the retreating blade flaps down. So our angle of attack is small on the advancing side and on the retreating side, it's massive. Our angle of attack is massive. So this is where, this is how we fly in unison. This is also the limiting factor of why helicopters can't go faster. Everyone's like, well, helicopters can't go as fast as airplanes. Yeah, it's true. Why? Dissymmetry of lift. Um, and blade flapping is how we fix for it, but it's not enough. What does blade flapping lead to? Well, if we have that high speed, this can lead to retreating blade stall. Retreating blade stall. What is retreating blade stall? Well, we have this situation here. The faster we go, the more the dissymmetry of lift grows. So we said this example at 100 knots. Well, the faster we push the helicopter, the more that this is going to happen, the more that this difference is going to happen. Small angle attack over here, super large angle attack on the retreating side. Eventually, the faster we go, we're going to have to increase that pitch angle of that blade. On the retreating side we're gonna have to increase it and it's gonna start here and maybe this is the pitch angle at 80 knots and then when we go to 90 knots the pitch angle is gonna have to increase then when we get to 100 knots it's gonna have to increase this is 90 and what is the VNE of the helicopter VNE this is velocity to never exceed 
v n e velocity to never exceed exceed is 102 in the r22 in the 44 it's higher uh but we're talking about the 22 here for sake of ease at 102 knots we that blade is pitched so far up to counteract the symmetry of lift that eventually it's going to get into a stall condition what is a stall condition well here is our nope let's do eraser let's go back to pen Okay, so this is like a normal position, and how does that airflow move over? It comes, hits the airfoil, and it is what we call laminar flow. Laminar, I don't know if it's A or E, laminar, we're going to go with that flow. Well, it's laminated to the blade, you know, like when you take a piece of paper and you put plastic and you melt it, and it becomes laminated. Well, that's, we call this with our airflow over the blade. It is laminar. It is sticking to the edge of the blade. Okay, when we get into a stall condition, what happens? Well, we have such a high pitch angle. This is really dramatic, but you get the point. That airflow hits the, comes along, hits the airflow. What happens? It breaks off, and it's no longer laminar on the top side, and this is a stall. Uh, we no longer have Bernoulli's principle. We still have Newton's third law, but without... Bernoulli's, we can't produce lift because Newton's third law and Bernoulli's, they work together. So we don't have effective lift because that stall's not working. Let's look at, let's, let's draw this. Reset. Let's draw wall. Okay. Actually, we can just insert load airfoil. Okay. So this is our airflow. We're going to just look at particles. Okay. So we have this laminar flow. You can see that it is laminated to the blade. Let's go down here. Let's draw wall. And let's go up here, and we're going to take really dramatic. Okay, there's our stalling blade. Uh, let me, can I move my face a little bit? No, that's not the one. That's the one. Okay, so, what's happening here? Uh, well, you get the point. Uh... The airflow behind the blade is completely stalling. We no longer have that laminar flow, right? And that is the stall condition. Okay, so stalling. Retreating blade stall is due to high forward air speed. Um, and that retreating blade is eventually going to have to hit the airflow or is going to hit what we call a critical angle. That's important. It hits the critical angle. the critical angle angle and that's where it stalls okay uh, retreating blade stall let's talk about this retreating blade stall what are the indications of it indications Firstly, you're going to be at a high forward airspeed. High airspeed, right? Because this it happens due to the symmetry of lift. So we're going to have a high airspeed. Firstly, we're going to have vibrations. Vibrations. Why are we getting vibrations? Well, if we look at the top-down perspective of the helicopter, here's our rotor system. We can actually move that a little bit further back. Okay, so this stall is going to happen right on the tips. So it's going to start on the tip. Um, and as, and as this happens, we have 100% lift over here and maybe we have 90% lift over here because we're no, it's stalled. So we're going to have this imbalance. So you're going to feel the helicopter go like shake a little bit because we're producing hundred percent, 90% over here. So we're just going to have vibrations because there's an imbalance as this stall grows on the retreating side, those vibrations are going to increase. Next, what are we going to have? We're going to have a roll towards the retreating side. Roll to the retreating side. Why does this happen? Well, over here we have 100% lift. 
So lift over here. And over here, we've got less lift. So because our retreating blade is stalling, that more lift over here is going to cause us to get a roll. Next, this is important. This is a, I think it's physics condition, but we get, a, there's this principle called gyroscopic precession. Gyroscopic precession. Precession. Gyroscopic precession. What does this state? On a spinning body, spinning body, a force inputted, a force input will manifest 90 degrees later in the direction of rotation. Gyroscopic precession. You'll be asked about it probably. Um, on a spinning body, a force input will manifest 90 degrees later. So we have a spinning body. Our rotor system is rotating counterclockwise, and it's rotating like this. Where is our force input? Well, our stall is happening here. It's actually not going to manifest there. 90 degrees later in the plane of rotation, it's actually going to manifest here. So we're going to get that roll towards the retreating side. That will happen. But we are also going to get a pitch up of the nose. Roll. And then we're going to get a, let's use white. We're going to get a pitch up of the nose. Why? Because less lift here. And then that's actually going to transfer and it's going to happen here. So we're going to have, it's going to start here, less lift here, but that actually manifests 90 degrees later in the plane of rotation. So if we have less lift on the back of the helicopter, we're going to have more lift in the front. So we're going to get a roll towards the retreating side and a pitch up of the nose. This is retreating blade stall. You're going to have a high airspeed, vibrations, and then you're going to get that roll. And then due to gyroscopic precession, 90 degrees later, that's actually going to cause a pitch up of the nose. Okay. Gyroscopic precession. Retreating blade stall, back to it. How do we recover? Retreating. Blade stall, recovery, is what do we need to do? We need to lower the collective. That's number one. First part of recovery from uh, retreating blade stall is lowering of the collective. Why? Well, why is our blade stalling? Because we have this high pitch angle. How do we reduce the pitch angle of the blade? Lower the collective. That's going to el immediately eliminate the stall condition because we're going to go from that stall to, or we're going to go from the stall and then we're going to return to the laminar flow, which is going to help us produce lift again. Number two, slow down. Slow down. This is kind of interesting and just follow me through this. So they say, okay, you get a roll towards that retreating side, and then you get a pitch up of the nose. Well, if you pitch up, aren't you going to slow down? Yes. So is it a self-correcting condition? It's kind of confusing, but no, it's not. Um, even though you are slowing down, you're still going to affect the stall, or you're still going to have a stall because it is due to the pitch of the blade. It is not necessarily entirely just due to the speed. So that pitch up of the nose is going to cause you to slow down, but what you need to do to recover is lower the collective Go from the stalling condition back to the laminar flow, and then you'll recover.